Today I'll be taking you on a small tour of the EU quarter uh, focused on Amazon. Proximity to power is important in here. A couple of months ago I did this exercise where I went and looked at their job offerings and I saw that Amazon was at that moment recruiting 20 free lobbyists that were either entirely or at least partially going to be working on EU policy. 20 free lobbyists is a lot. <laughs> For any company, that's a lot. Amazon itself has a history of not being the most transparent of organizations. So I have all of this data about lobbying because there's an EU transparency lobby register for over 10 years now. That's where lobbyists are supposed to register and declare their own lobby uh, spend. Um, and it started as an entirely voluntary register. So for a long time, companies like Amazon simply rejected joining. In, sp in spite of the fact that they were clearly, and we had evidence of this, lobbying the institutions. Uh, so Amazon actually only joined the register in September 2014. And this is not a random date. This is because it was a couple of weeks before the Commission passed a new rule that made it impossible for companies that were unregistered to meet with commissioners and their cabinets. So I think this is a perfect example. The companies on their own, they're not going to release information. Med transparency rules need to be made mandatory, and we still have immense loopholes that make that this data that I showed you is still only just a glimpse into the entire lobbying. They're in health, they're in finance, they're evading really the entire services sector. This is what we have to battle about. And when we look at Amazon, what they are doing, just some examples. I mean, they are viciously anti-trade unions. They don't want to have trade unions in there. The police is already coming, so we might have support from them as well. So they are viciously anti-trade union. And they do this in the way that they stop workers having a say, but they also try to have working conditions and pay which is bad. And they want actually to transform workers into robots, which are basically only doing every second what the company is doing. And it's not really the company, it's algorithms which they want to be using in this regard as well. And obviously, if you have one company which is doing it like this, then it has impact on all the competitors as well. And this Amazon is even monetizing because their method of controlling people is now their next business model, which go out going to small, medium-sized companies and saying, buy it from us. And the result again is they get more data, more surveillance. They surveil companies, they surveil workers, they surveil consumers. And when you look at it, Amazon also provides their web services for governments. Are they surveilling? our public authorities as well, that is a question. We will have demonstrations uh, worldwide. We will work together with our affiliates in Italy, in Spain, in Germany and across the globe to really make sure that this gets to the forefront of the discussions in Europe. Il y a ce qu'on appelle au Parlement européen un registre de transparence où les lobbyistes sont censés s'enregistrer et les députés qui les rencontrent euh, indiquer les rendez-vous qu'ils ont. Ce lobby et pas du tout ce registre de transparence n'est jamais complété. Jamais, jamais, jamais. Et le problème, c'est que ces rendez-vous entre les députés et les lobbyistes, tous les millions d'euros que les lobbyistes mettent pour influencer le processus législatif, et ben après, ça se ressent dans les lois qui sont votées. Il ne faut pas s'étonner ensuite si l'Union européenne, elle vote des directives, elle valide des directives qui vont dans le sens de l'intérêt de Google, d'Amazon, d'Uber, de Deliveroo, plus que dans l'intérêt des travailleurs. Si en fait, tout au cours du parcours législatif, ils sont autant présents, ils sont, ils sont autant présents, ils sont autant chez eux. Donc moi, face à ça, ce que je propose, c'est au contraire de créer un contre-lobby, un lobby citoyen, un lobby populaire. On voit déjà que les travailleurs d'Amazon, ils s'organisent partout dans le monde. Pour avoir visité des entrepôts Amazon et avoir organisé, j'ai organisé des auditions internationales de travailleurs d'Amazon, c'est frappant de voir à quel point tous, ils parlent des langues différentes, mais ils racontent la même chose. Ils racontent à quel point tout est fait pour robotiser le moindre de leurs gestes. Ils racontent à quel point tout est fait pour qu'ils ne se parlent pas, pour qu'ils ne s'organisent pas, pour empêcher l'organisation collective, pour faire en sorte qu'ils soient divisés. Et bien, quand ils s'unissent, ces travailleurs, au sein même d'un entrepôt, mais à l'échelle internationale, comme euh, euh, ce à quoi s'attelle euh, UI Global, par exemple, euh, eh bien, ça pèse dans le rapport de force. Et au-delà de ça, pour faire tomber Amazon, il s'agit de monter des coalitions qui réunissent à la fois les travailleurs, mais aussi les parlementaires, euh, un réseau de parlementaires. On a un certain nombre au Parlement européen de tous les groupes à vouloir s'opposer à l'impunité d'Amazon et à les forcer à respecter la loi, à respecter les droits euh, démocratiques, euh, l'économie, et arrêter de tout piétiner euh, euh, comme ça. Des coalitions larges qui réunissent de, des gens de tous les pays, de tous les niveaux, donc toutes catégories, donc travailleurs, politiques, activistes, 
pour faire tomber Amazon. Et c'est comme ça, c'est comme ça, je crois, qu'on va construire un lobby, un lobby populaire cette fois, qui va être beaucoup plus puissant, beaucoup plus légitime que le lobby euh, qui est aujourd'hui présent à Bruxelles et comme à la maison. Et c'est comme ça qu'on va gagner et qu'on va les faire payer. Make Amazon pay. In tech sector, we have a lot of uh, NGOs that are claiming to speak on behalf of SMEs, especially. And then when you go and see, they are entirely funded by Amazon, Microsoft, Apple. Um, and what they are saying is very different than what actually independent SMEs are saying. The, it's not just a few workers we're talking about. We're talking about 1.3 million workers. Uh, and the list is long in how they are surveying their, uh, their workers and how they're spying on them. So I'll just mention a few. One is uh, wristbands, uh, measuring every movement you do. Another is floor sensors that check if you leave your station that goes into their, uh, their statistics and their point system, which can lead to firing. Scanners, cameras, uh, even uh, at your workstation, there are countdowns with how many seconds you're allowed to take for, uh, for your product to be moved. They also use private investigators, but we can also call this what it is. It's often uh, union busters that go undercover in the companies uh, and of course feed the information of which workers are trying to unionize. Uh, they even infiltrate uh, the, their workers' Facebook uh, groups uh, and become friends with workers to find out who are the leading workers uh, in, in trying to unionize. Amazon is receiving millions in taxpayers' money from European governments. 1.3 billion in the last three years. It's a company that is avoiding public scrutiny, as we've heard, that is avoiding uh, to go to the European uh, Parliament for a hearing that is uh, being under scrutiny by the European Commission for false competition. And that same company is actually now uh, managing the data of the European Commission. So that's pretty crazy. We mostly think of Amazon as just an online platform where we buy books and other stuff. But actually what Amazon is doing is changing the way of work that we have all known. Um, the work environment should be a place where people are respected, where they do the job, where if something is not possible, they can talk with the manager. And if things are going wrong, they can talk with the trade union. Under Amazon surveillance system, this is absolutely not possible. They're constantly being surveyed per second what they are actually doing and they have no way to complain about it. This is not the way we want to go. But next to that, they're actually trying to robotify people to have the best system to actually, you know, give people the least uh, financial means and the least opportunities on the work floor and sell that this again to other companies. When I try to address with Amazon how they are treating their employees, they're not interested to talk about that. They only want to talk about how they're actually a green company, how they have green vans, not mentioning that these vans are actually constantly surveying the people who are driving them. And they only want to talk about their sustainability targets. But how can a company that has, has so many airplanes and has basically replaced small and medium businesses in cities by uh, sending around packages all over the world be a sustainable company? Company. And in the meantime, they're getting a lot of public contracts from governments to actually work for them. Like, how are we still accepting this company to even do things funded by public money? I don't understand it. On the 26th of November, it's Black Friday, a day where we all know that the employees of Amazon have to work immensely hard to get there. And it's a global day of action to make sure we make Amazon pay. Estamos hoy aquí, una vez más, para denunciar las prácticas abusivas de grandes corporaciones digitales como Amazon, que juegan a establecer una competencia desleal en nuestra economía de mercado y ejercen un control desmesurado e inaceptable sobre sus trabajadores y trabajadoras a través de prácticas antisindicales y de explotación laboral. Estas multinacionales deben cumplir con lo establecido en la legislación europea, Y es momento de decir basta, no a las prácticas monopolísticas, no a la evasión de tasas fiscales, no a la explotación laboral y la vigilancia de los trabajadores y no al incumplimiento de la ley de protección de datos y de los derechos fundamentales. Amazon ha recibido alrededor de 1,3 mil millones en contratos públicos en los últimos tres años. Intenta influir de forma considerable en los poderes públicos, al igual que otras grandes corporaciones como Facebook y Google. Mientras tanto, ponen en marcha nuevas estrategias de automatización que transforman las relaciones laborales, 
y ejercen una vigilancia y control constante a través de cámaras de vigilancia y nuevos sistemas algorítmicos. Todo ello está generando unos ambientes de trabajo precarios, no seguros, insanos e inestables. Basta ya. Vamos a luchar para que cumplan con la legislación europea en vigor, para que se respeten los estándares establecidos de salud y seguridad en el lugar de trabajo, por la no violación de los derechos de privacidad y por alcanzar una mayor regulación en un mundo digital que respete unas condiciones laborales justas y dignas. PwC is a company that provides aggressive tax planning services. That means that it helps companies like Amazon avoid taxes uh, by putting them and giving them agreements with places like Luxembourg. This was all revealed especially um, in what has become known as the LuxLeaks, which really showed that Amazon was playing a very minimal amount of tax. But not only does uh, PwC offer this sort of tax planning services to Amazon and other companies, they also then have different hats that they put on um, where they can influence the EU's tax policy. So by that I mean that sometimes they get uh, given procurement contracts by uh, the EU Commission to uh, do research and give recommendations on tax issues. Uh, sometimes they sit exactly on expert groups from the Commission where they advise the Commission on how it should reform tax policy. Obviously you can expect that they're not the most progressive uh, of people when it comes to tax policy. Today we walked around uh, Brussels on a lobbying tour showing where Amazon is based and who is supporting Amazon in its plight to, to make sure that Amazon wins the legislative battle. And we make sure that they won't. We have a joint coalition here with uh, MEPs as well as with civil society organizations. But what is important, we are standing here in front of the European Parliament this is not the only place where we fight Amazon, and it's not the only place where Amazon is fighting workers and citizens in Europe. We are also fighting them in the workplace. That is one of the key battles that the European trade union movement, that Union Europa is fighting here in Europe and uh, the trade unions across the globe, and that is in the companies. In Italy, we managed to get a collective agreement for Amazon. That is the first. It was a, uh, it was a very difficult fight, but we get there. It shows us that we have the possibility. As we d went around and have uh, the support of MEPs, next week we are coming back here to Brussels with workers uh, from across Europe to demonstrate for regulation of Amazon. We want the European Union, the Parliament, the Council and the Commission to put forward initiatives and legislate so that Amazon's power is reined in. To counter lobby power, we need um, EU policymakers to handle lobbyists differently. Uh, we need them to be more skeptical of what they say. We need them to question who funds who and what they are speaking about. We need them to question the research and evidence that the lobbyists put in front of them. And we need them to reach out to other voices, to those that have less money. We need them to reach out to trade unions, to civil society organizations, and get their points of view in EU policy issues. So I invite you all to come together here in Brussels or in your own home countries to demonstrate for workers' rights, for citizens' rights and against Amazon making what it wants. Let's make Amazon pay.